Hello and welcome to the Networking Lunchbox. Today we're going to look at the standard setup for our networking and cybersecurity classrooms. Each room is going to be set up with computers and physical equipment in the room for you to use. There are two sets of connections on the walls or ducting. The first set of ducting is where you're going to be connecting for the internet. This is where you're doing your chapter exams, your online content, updating your Facebook status, everything you need to do online. The second set of ducting physically connects to the equipment in your room. And this is completely isolated from the internet. The first thing we need to do is to connect our computers to the equipment at the back of the room using the network card. We unplug our ethernet connections from the internet link and connect them into the ducting that feeds to the back of the room. Then we go to the back of the room and we plug in another patch lead to connect ourselves directly into the ethernet interface of whatever networking device we're trying to configure. Each computer is also set up with a console cable. So then we can just plug the console cable also into the same ducting on the corresponding point for our desk. Then we go to the back of the room with another patch lead and connect from the correct port into the console port of the device we're trying to configure. Now each computer is set up with a virtualization software to run a Windows 10 or Windows 7 or whatever OS is required and a piece of terminal emulation software like PuTTY or TerraTerm or HyperTerminal. The console port is already hard patched in to our serial port COM1 and through that we can launch our terminal emulation software like PuTTY or TerraTerm and get full access to the console port which is what is needed for initial configuration of our device. We've also cabled in the Ethernet connection into the network card of our PC. So now we've got our network connectivity to the device we're trying to program. But there's a problem. The base operating system or the base Windows is locked down. It won't let you change the IP address. IPv4, IPv6, you can't make any of these changes. But we have a virtual operating system that's living inside our Windows and it has its own virtual network interface card. So then we use the hypervisor, either VMware or VirtualBox, to bridge the connection. So now we have a virtual operating system. We can go in there, we can make changes, we've got administrative privileges, we can change the IP address, we can statically define it, we can set up IPv6, and everything is good to go. So we use the physical base operating system for the serial connect connectivity, and whenever we need to set up a PC with a static address and do some pings and trace routes, we use the virtual operating system. For our cybersecurity labs, we've got a different setup. We've got a whole bunch of OSs all talking to each other internally with its own internal switch set up by either VMware or VirtualBox. So we've got Windows, a couple of Windows, a bit of Kali, a bit of Metasploit. The most critical factor about this setup is that we never allow any of these five computers to be bridged to our network card because the Metasploit and the Kali and even the Windows, if they've got viruses on them that you put there by Metasploit or Kali, they can do really bad things if that traffic can leak out onto our network. So absolutely make sure that those OSs are locally switched by their own internal networking. All right, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of my upcoming videos. See you on the next one.